Now, um, so this, now that we have seen how Prim's algorithm works, um, let's look at uh, whether this algorithm always generates an optimal solution for a given graph, right? Because that's important. We know that it works for this specific situation, but remember, like we saw for the coin situation earlier, there was a situ there was a case for a certain weird denomination where greedy algorithm did not work. So it's really important for you to figure out whether Prim's algorithm absolutely works every single time. I can let you in on a secret, it does, right? But you just can't take my word for it because especially when it comes to greedy algorithms, proof, a proper systematic proof becomes really, really important, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are going to prove the correctness of Prim's algorithm. So before we uh, set out to prove Prim's algorithm, let's think about what it tries to do, okay? So um, Prim's algorithm tries to generate a minimum spanning tree at the end through a sequence of expanding subtrees, right? So the sequence of ex uh, the individual subtrees in that sequence of expanding subtrees themselves become subgraphs of the minimum spanning tree, or subtrees. You can call them subtrees, right? So um, how do we? Uh, so what we need? What do we need to prove here exactly? We need to prove that all of those subtrees that are generated in the sequence as well as the last tree, which is the MST, all of them are subgraphs of MST. Okay, so um, we can do this through uh, a process called induction. We can prove by induction, right? So how does that work? Um, Prim's algorithm, let's say, generates a sequence of subtrees like this, P1, P2, and Pn minus 1, right? Now, Pn minus 1 is a subgraph of the minimum spanning tree, which includes all of its vertices, right? So what does that tell you? A subgraph that includes all of the vertices of the graph and is a subgraph of the minimum spanning tree means that Tn minus one itself is the minimum spanning tree, right? So that's one important observation for us now. And T naught, it has to be a minimum spanning tree. Why? Because uh, you start with a single node that you have chosen arbitrarily. A minimum spanning tree by definition includes all the nodes. So if even if you choose any of the nodes in the graph, it has to be a subgraph of the minimum spanning tree. So our base case is trivial, right? What do you need to prove something by induction? You need you need two things. You need one is the basis of induction, and second is the inductive step itself. Okay. So basis, we have already said T naught is a subgraph of T, which is the minimum spanning tree. Okay, uh, the inductive step, uh, how it works is you assume that a given ith step produces a subgraph of minimum spanning tree. And then you prove that T i plus one, the i plus one step also after applying prims generates a subgraph of minimum spanning. So if Ti is, um, I'm going to denote it like this subgraph of minimum spanning tree, then proof Ti plus one is also a subgraph of minimum spanning tree, right? So that's that's the uh, thing that we are trying to prove here now. Um, now, how, how, how do we do that? Okay, we can prove this, we have already proven this, so that's done. We have to do this now, right? So uh, how do we do that? Uh, we can do it through a method of contradiction, right? So how that works is you basically make an assumption and then you see how it pans out. If the conclusion that you get from that assumption is um, illogical or contradictory, that means your initial assumption was wrong, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to assume that Prim's algorithm produces a Ti plus one subgraph, which cannot be part of any minimum spanning tree. Right, so our assumption for contradiction, I'm going to call it AFC, assumption for contradiction is that Ti plus one cannot belong to any minimum spanning tree of that graph, right? So for us to be able to understand this, let's, let's quickly draw something so that's easier to visualize, you know? Okay, so let's assume that this is the final minimum spanning tree that we get out of a given graph G, okay? So 
that's how we know denote it right t is a subgraph of the entire total graph and t is the minimum spanning graph so i'm going to write it as m t um we have assumed that the ith tree generated by prim is already a subgraph of a minimum spanning graph right so let's say this portion that i've drawn in black represents pi okay um now what we do is uh, we assume one more so let's let's assume that there's some edge e which connects some vertex v in pi to some vertex u outside of pi right so let this be that edge okay it's it's an arbitrary edge it could be anywhere in the um, because we are not specifically defined any node at this point right so this is b and this is u okay so um, e by definition of minimum spanning tree the fact that this whole thing is a minimum spanning tree and pi is being connected to the rest of the minimum spanning tree through e tells us that e is the minimum weight h okay uh, now we apply prim algorithm to ti to generate ti plus 1 okay how does prim algorithm work think about it what does prim algorithm do uh, the point or the core essence of prim algorithm is to look at available options for uh, connecting edges to vertices that are outside of the tree currently and pick the one that is the lowest okay but if you see our original assumption is that prim's algorithm does not generate a spanning tree that is a subgraph of any minimum spanning tree right so we are saying that ti plus 1 that prim will generate will not be a subgraph of minimum spanning tree so that we are basically saying is prim is going to fail okay so if prim has to fail it cannot choose this edge because choosing this edge would result in this minimum spanning tree which means that prim is successful we have assumed that it fails so prim is left with no choice but to select some other edge other than this let's say it cho chose some edge e prime that connects b prime with u prime okay i'm going to call it e prime the one that is in red okay so um yeah let me try this down okay uh now how does prim's algorithm work it chose the minimum weight edge right what does that tell us it tells us that the weight of edge e prime has to be less than or equal to e because that's how it works that's the definition of prime sorry prim algorithm right so that's what it basically is telling us okay now if we delete the edge b e this edge if i b u uh, weight e if we delete that edge we end up with a spanning tree like this okay now what has changed so this portion has the same weight this portion has the same weight as before okay uh, the only thing that changed is this and this okay so we have already observed that e prime has a weight less than or equal to e that means prim has been able to generate a minimum spanning tree which is this whole thing including this which has a weight less than or equal to the original minimum spanning tree that we had now think about it does that make sense can you generate a spanning tree a subgraph of a spanning tree or a minimum spanning tree that has a weight lower than a minimum spanning tree right that doesn't work because by definition it has to have the lowest weight so if it is less than the minimum spanning tree it's illogical if it is the same weight then prim has successfully generated a minimum spanning tree which refutes our original assumption that ti plus 1 cannot be a subgraph of any span uh, uh, any uh, minimum spanning tree right because this is either a minimum spanning tree or it's lower than that refuting our original assumption and thereby proving that prim generate prim generates ti plus 1 which belongs to some minimum spanning tree um and that that basically proves that prim algorithm 